the idea behind this was that it's supposed to be a story about three individuals, one of whom happens to be a teddy bear. Don't look so surprised. I didn't question it at all. I went, okay. I'm a special case. I'm a talking teddy bear. I'm on a cartoon with a talking dog. Like, I'm not gonna question a bear. What's the difference? Like, oh my God, this bear's so cool. He can talk and do stuff. You're supposed to forget that he's a bear. We don't want Ted to have any sort of special treatment. <laughs> Part of what's funny to me is that it's not a big deal. It's just his appearance that is not human. The material is so funny, I wanted to play everything as real as possible. Now it's real. Now it's a real thing. Oh, come on, take it easy. All right, look, let's just find a better place to get stoned. I wanted to play it completely straight. I love you. Oh, fuck. Shit, sorry. And let the laughs come from the craziness of the situation. Fuck you, Thunder! You believe in Ted is such a... He's so out there, but he's still so fucking lovable, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. We weren't interested in creating a cartoon. Everybody who came in with that point of view really helped us create a world in which we have a special effect, and that's Ted, and the rest of the world is very authentic. You know, Seth spent a lot of time on the animation, on the reality of the voice, on the reality of the movements, and what really, I think, helped a lot is Seth is right off camera, and he's performing the character with you. Well, I am a former celebrity in a minimum wage job. I, this, this is how the cast of Different Strokes must feel. So you're, you're acting off of at least a voice and a personality, which helped make everything feel real in the moment. Ted's a, uh, I don't really think of this as a two-hander, as they say. I didn't know what the hell that meant until I came out to Hollywood. Apparently, two-hander is a buddy comedy. It's like, oh, it's Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller. It's a two-hander, which is an interesting, useless piece of information. But to me, this seems like a three-hander in a lot of ways. Teddy is fast. Mark is a guy who can very quietly and humbly can do anything. We threw every type of comedy at him in this movie. All you gotta do is not fuck up. You're the least <laughs> fucked up. I'm sorry. Did you just fart in my fucking office? I apologize. Did you just fucking fart? I got nervous. I think I got a concussion and I, my, my stomach is upset from the nausea and driving. You got a problem. Your asshole should be fucking clenched when I'm talking to you. It is, sir. No, it's not. You just fucking shit in my room. It didn't come out. It smells There's like it. There's a fucking poop too. fog in here. Dear God in heaven, what did you eat? I don't Ugh. know. Smells like fucking rotten meat and cocaine in here. What kind of diet are you on? I apologize. This was a movie that required him to not only do comedy, but to do comedy without the benefit of another actor there. This place looks great. Oh, thanks, man. Did the whole thing for eight bucks. Yeah. Nice. Eight bucks and and a blowjob. Oh, the neighbors. Uh, that was who I gave the blowjob to. It's supposed to be about three individuals in a love triangle, and Mila is not the hands-on hips, OU, traditional comedy girlfriend. She's not that at all. What is that? What, what, what is what? There's a shit on the floor. Oh, my God. You know what? That's probably what Deirdre was doing over in the corner there for so long. Remember, she was crouched over there? I, mean, I thought she was just making a phone call or something. There is a shit on my floor! Yeah, yeah, she's passed out in the bathroom now. She seemed like she was hopped up on something, but you know, mystery solved, I guess, right? She was taking a shit. What the fuck? To come home to a teddy bear, having a brothel in your living room would probably set people off, let alone finding a human shit on the floor. Yeah, that was a fun scene to shoot. Is that a human shit? <laughs> I don't think she overreacted. Like, if I were to come home and there was a human poo-poo on the floor, I think I would have reacted much worse than she did. Fuck! So I give her credit. She stayed calm-ish. <laughs> Johnny. 
Ted's a Boston meathead. He's grown in the same way that any other guy who grew up in that part of the country would grow, including Mark's character. I got a shitty job, and I assure you, I'm quite content. I don't know, maybe I'll suck dicks in the South End for extra cash. We'll, we'll get it sorted out. They both live in the same part of the country, so they're both gonna develop that horrible Boston accent. You ever hear a Boston girl have an orgasm? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Had a, had a. Oh, God, that was so good! Now I'm gonna stuff my fucking face with Pepperidge Farm. You know, growing up in New England, it's a really fun part of the country. The people are really warm. Fuck you! Just because you're on the business world and shit, you think, what, everybody should, like, suck your asshole or something? They're great pe folks to go drinking with. Well, you never should have trusted me. I'm on drugs. They're, they're a great bunch of people, but there's oftentimes no sense of, of what to say and what not to say. You got what it takes? I'll tell you what I got. Your wife's pussy on my breath. But it's all forgivable because their hearts are in the right place. Nobody's ever talked to me like that before. That's because everyone's mouth is usually full of your wife's box. You're hired. Shit. The idea was for him to look pretty simple. I, I did a, a two-dimensional drawing of Ted that was stylistically trying to evoke simplicity of design. And the trick was to take it and make it work three-dimensionally. The intention was always for Ted to be worn down. At one point in the script, he was gonna be really fucked up. You know, he was gonna have more patches, grape juice stains, you know, stuffing. He's maybe gonna be missing an eye. And it seemed like the more of that that we put in, the trade-off was he stopped looking as cute. And you have to have him look cute in order for him to get away with what he says. No, no, I just, I just thought you might want some extra semen on your, uh, on, on, on your poop deck. Something that's gonna be that much of an asshole had better be physically as non-threatening as possible. <laughs> your dad likes you to show good manners, right, uh, Tubby McFadfuck? Initially with Ted, one of our biggest concerns was his scale and how is he gonna interact with people. So we did a ton of tests right out of the gate where we, we want to use real humans. So we shot some plates with us interacting with Ted. We did some running, some chasing, some, you know, um, getting up into a chair. We did a number of these kinds of things. You know, the scale test, we had a, our biggest concern was how do you walk with a teddy bear? Is it like walking with a toddler? You know, we didn't know. So what we did initially is we shot me on stage walking with Seth's mocap. So we had mocap of Seth doing a walk. And we said, okay, how fast can I walk to get the bear to actually walk with me? And then we did another test where I said, okay, now I'm gonna walk at a normal speed. Let's put the, the motion capture in there and see how fast there's a difference. These initial tests gave us a huge idea as far as like the speed of Ted. And then as well as like, what's gonna happen when they contact? So, you know, we did little tests. It taught us a ton about like, you know, interaction. Help me. <laughs> Jesus H, fuck! When we first heard, it's like, a uh, talking teddy bear, oh, that'll be a piece of cake. And he was anything but. We'd been doing, like, giant animals and all these crazy furry creatures, and it ended up being super difficult. Artificial fur is a lot finer, and it also transmits light differently, too, and it's, like, one of those things everybody knows what it looks like. So we actually spent a really long time trying to get the bear to look super real or it wasn't gonna be funny. Meat hole. What is that? You know, that's not right, is it? No. Put, put, put in hole? One of the great things uh, that's really unusual is to get spontaneity. Seth has been on the set in his suit working directly with the actor, so it's not overdubbed later. It's very, very real, very live. You know, he can sort of trade riffs with Mark or, or Mila. You know, it really does make a big difference, especially for for comedy. If there's no ski at the end of the root word, then we would just be idiots saying nonsense. Sorry, right. honey. It, he's the commissioner. Don't apologize. You did nothing rules. wrong. Good. <laughs> we said, if we're going to do this, let's do it all live. Action. I look stupid. You know, you look dapper. I'm a fuzzy little guy wearing a suit that could fit a child. That does not scream respect. What that did was, A, allowed us to go off script, which you don't necessarily get the option to do when you're working with CG characters because their dialogue is recorded weeks before or weeks after. A lot of people seem to respect Austin Hoffman. No, not, not after Mr. McGorium's crazy chop of fucked up shit, or whatever the goddamn thing was called. We were doing it all live, so that was an advantage. And the other advantage is that the audio... So bad. It was the same air. But so good. <laughs> yes, a study in contrasts. You know, our voices were bouncing off the same walls in the same room, 
And that goes a lot further than you think it would in getting an animated character in the world of a live action character. I'm sorry. <laughs> Technologically speaking, there's a, it's pretty advanced actually, and it bodes well for innovation and higher quality. That's really cool, that's really exciting. I mean, I think that's also just Seth MacFarlane. You know, I think he's really that talented and, and able, you know, not everybody can do that, but he's able to stand in front of the monitor, direct, and also act as Ted and move around and do the, you know, like, all right, you know that thing. Ah, this one's a ball buster. The Moven suit was a fucking godsend because originally I was gonna have to wear this, one of these, these spandex suits with a little ball sensors on them. It was 100 degrees in there. And if I was just doing the bear, we could probably do this, but I'm also directing this movie. I can't be in this thing all day. I'm gonna kill myself. And my producer, Jason Clark, did some research and found this Moven system where you just put straps on over your everyday clothes. It's still not the most comfortable thing in the world, but you know, I could walk around in it all day. I could sit down and wires everywhere sticking out. Come on, bring it in, you bastard. That was what enabled us to do it all live, that I, I, I would be off camera, you know, performing with Mark or Mila or whoever. Go. Brandy, Heather, Channing, Brianna, Amber, Sabrina, Melody, Dakota, Sierra, Bambi, Crystal, Samantha, Tara, Tammy, Tammy, Lauren, Shalene, Chantel, Christy, fucking Mindy, Gina, Krista, fucking Brenda, holy fuck. <laughs> Since Ted never actually shows up until post-production when we render him, we have to create a series of passes to record the information as we need it. So we'll do first a stuffy pass. Blair, get in there. Yeah, come on, Blair. Get your finger in his ass, goddammit. The stuffy was an actual stuffed bear that was a representation of Ted. It just gives the actor something a little more tangible to interact with. Generally, before every shot, I would take the stuffy and I would kind of roughly puppeteer the stuffy as Ted, and so that the actors had a good idea of what Ted would be doing during the scene. Down here. Swear to God, not looking up your towel, not looking at your funny business. The first take, you get a stuffy pass, which is like the little stuffy teddy bear sits there. And then they pull the stuffy away. And then you're literally acting against air. Then we'll put an eyeline reference tool in, basically a stick with two dots on it to represent Ted's eyes. Was it any one of those names with a lint after it? Yes. You motherfucker! I knew it. I got you, motherfucker. Tammy Lynn. Oh, shit, it is Tammy Lynn. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I got him, motherfucker! motherfucker. You, hey. you win all the weed on that table. Yes. Fuck, sorry. <laughs> if Ted was supposed to be sitting next to Mark in a scene, he would know exactly where to look when he's having a conversation with Ted. What is it? Eyelines are something that are very difficult for us to deal with in post if they're, if they're not correct. It's interesting, because for the most part, you're working with a stand. It's different. There's definitely a challenge with that. No, don't touch me. Sorry. <laughs> it took a little while to get used to acting opposite whatever they had, whether they had the, the stuffed bear there or they had the little stick with the eyes on it. And then, of course, having Seth, you know, somewhere in the room doing the voice was also very helpful. Company's turning 20, eh? so you can bang it, but you can't get it drunk. <laughs> right? She gets it. She gets She loves my humor. She enjoys my humor. <laughs> You know, the dinner table scene actually gave me the most angst because how is a guy who's never directed a movie before, he's got three actors that he has to cover, and then there's a fourth seat that's open, and that's him. It always looks so great, I just always want to fucking brush it. You know, I, I, it's right, Johnny, I say that. And then he's got to sit in an oversized table over to the left. A lot of women look like unsteady horses when they wear high heels, but Laurie has sort of a regal um, new trot. A canter. Oh my god, yes, you canter. canter. So he's got a bigger plate and a bigger set of fork and knife and everything while he's doing all these things for basically the visual effects markers, and nothing about it threw him, and he just handled it really well. What happens is we're, we're sitting at a table, and Blair, he puts the bear in, and we get an eye level. They set the eye line. Okay. Now, is it weird, though? <laughs> then we rehearse, and then when we shoot the scene, they take it out, and then we, we just have to pretend that someone's there. It's definitely different. It's different. When they pull the bear away, I'm like, oh. That's my boyfriend. <laughs> as far as holding the hand, I took a little rod, and I would just raise it up and put it down, and she would just hold on to that, because you get all of the interaction, and you get his fur coming from, you know, between her fingers, and it's one more little trick to integrate him into the scene. Come on, honey, let's get out of here. We'll go back to my place for a couple of vodka and strawberry quicks. You know what? Stick your fucking asshole right up your fucking ass. How about okay. that? OK, it's so good to yeah. see you guys. You know, I gave birth once. 
I can kick your fucking ass. All right. That's a cut. To talk to air. That was new to me. I've never talked to nothing. I mean, I'm learning to not be distracted by hearing in your ear, but knowing that he's right over there. That was the hard thing to do, was not move my head to look at Seth when he was talking. Obviously, when you, you're hearing a voice, you want to kind of look to the direction that the voice is coming from. But once we got into it, it was fine. But it was great because we were still kind of playing off of each other quite a bit. I was nervous about filming the sex scene with the bear. Stick your finger in the loop of my tag. Because the majority of the shooting, the bear's not there, so you're reacting to, to nothing. At one time, I said, so am I just going to be like spread eagle on the table here with like nothing there? And he's all, no, no, on the floor. And I'm like, oh, my God. Copy that, huh? Yeah, that's it. Just reference. Dying. It was painful to, to film, it was, but it was very technical. Oh, you did it. Just do like slight writhing movements. <laughs> he was like a little bit more rhythmic. Rhythmic. Boom, boom. <laughs> the hair faster. Yeah, like he's going to be pumping. All like, right. You'll see his tail pumping away. I should have had a, a cocktail beforehand. <laughs> We're good. It's interesting. Parts of the movie are my movements, and then parts are not. I humped the cash register, pantomimed fellatio, and jerking off two dudes. It's the kind of progressive left-wing guy I am. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, kind of, that's why I watch these things. That's like a cool behind-the-scenes thing that you wouldn't know. So sometimes we'd get shots where Seth wasn't able to do mocap, and so we'd have to pantomime some things. You know, at first we're like, oh, it's easy. It's the bear's butt going up and down. And Seth was like, oh, I don't know, that's kind of fast. It looks a little violent, a little too aggressive. And so it's like, okay, okay, dial it back. So we got, I got a little rounder with it. We got a little more, you know, finesse, if you will. It's not enough thrusting. I want some more thrusting. So we got out some furniture and, and, and I took the plunge and got a little intimate with an office chair. I thought that was just for people in Florida. Actually, surprisingly helped us find that little bit that Seth was looking for in, uh, in the rhythm of Ted and Tammy Lynn. The parts that we, we couldn't do live, for example, like Ted climbing on the tower, or Ted in the back of the car, there were things, once you get into action scenes, it just you kind of have to do keyframe animation. What was great about it in terms of comedy is because you have to evolve the bear in terms of visual effects. So we had different variations of it. We had a grayscale bear, so you could put it into the frame. So when you're editing the movie, it was a great tool comedically and, and just character-wise. Now, in some cases, Ted interferes or, or moves the environment. If he's sitting on a couch, the pillows may depress. If he runs across a bed, we may have depressions in the bed, where a lot of that we try to do live on the set so that we have those movements that we can animate Ted into. So creating this interactive environment will hopefully create less separation between the CG character and the live action world. OK, no peeking now, or you'll get kid cancer. He cuts with his ear, which is an amazing thing. It's very different than a lot of visual directors. Because he comes from animation, he hears stuff, and he'll almost cut a dialogue sequence in a sort of internal rhythm that he just sort of does with his hearing as opposed to a visual thing, and then the visual will follow. He's alive, look! When I'm cutting a scene with two characters having a back and forth, I'm. I am definitely cutting more with my ears than, than my eyes. We normally don't put in any sort of lip syncing until well into the shot. But for Seth, that's what he wanted to see. So we would do the roughest kind of layout, and then we would lip sync the, the shot to almost final level in our very early stages of animation. That was really what Seth was after. He wanted to make sure that you know we captured that sort of facial performance. What are you doing? You want to come over and catch a buzz? And then you go on and you improve that. And OK, what exactly is he doing? And how is he doing it? So early on, it didn't have fur. And then it would have fur, but no lighting. And then it would have lighting. And then it would be the finished shot. So we have all these stages that normally you go through. There are two different studios who, who basically work together to get all the TED work into the movie. Tippett uh, in San Francisco and Allura in Australia were superb in the way they put all this together. Looking at the when I, just so it matches the vowel a, a little better. We introduce Seth to CineSync. So whether you're in Australia, or whether you're in Oakland, wherever you are, you have your files locally. In this case, we're quick times to review our shots. And CineSync is a, is a means by which to control what everybody's seeing and keep it in sync. Yeah. 
See, that's why we didn't cut it. <laughs> we were able to review twice a week with Seth and with the Tippet guys, and we would do that mainly through Skype and through CineSync. Larry there, you can draw the axe in there. You can draw on the CineSync picture as well, so if you're saying, see this part of the bear and you're circling it on your screen, it's appearing on everybody else's screen. So like, he just kind of taps it like that and then the ball goes in. He had his tablet, he would sit, and he would do these, you know, elaborate drawings on the frame so that everybody can see. He completely embraced the technology. Thanks, Seth. All right, thanks, you guys. Great, great stuff. Seth is an artist. You know, he started Family Guy, he drew it. So he knows what it means to create this stuff. He knew exactly what he wanted. He could tell us, and we, we understood what he meant. Yeah, just something to kind of break up, the, make it more candid. Yeah, exactly, yeah. What our ambition is is to render a character that everybody forgets is a character and they just love this guy. He's two and a half foot tall talking teddy bear who talks a little bit of a blue streak. Hey, play chopsticks, you jazzy slut. Teddy! <laughs> but he's a hell of a nice guy. The main thing Seth made clear from the beginning was he wanted this character to be real. I'm a little fucked up. He didn't want it to be an animated character, so he didn't want overarching gestures and heavy overlap and stuff you see in an animated movie. He wanted people to walk out of theater going, that Ted was funny, not that Ted was a great animated character. <laughs> he acknowledged it. Hey, a squirt, how you doing? Where's your bunny rabbit? It's a bear. <laughs> it's a bear. It just makes me giggle, because I heard it like this. It's a bear. <sighs> now, I know he didn't say it this way, and I'm sure his face didn't contort, but that is how I saw it in my head. Where's your bunny rabbit? He's a bear. <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> He's a bear. And then we were shooting the car thing. <laughs> Come on, hurry, quick. It's my teddy bear, go. <laughs> What's so fucking funny? This is serious. You want me to say it real fast ten times? <laughs> Teddy bear. <laughs> he calls 911 and he goes, 911, <laughs> I need the police. This man stole my teddy bear. Hello, 911? Yeah, I need the police right away. This guy took my teddy bear. Hello? I lost my shit for ten minutes. I could not keep it together. 911? Stop. I need the police right away. Yeah, this guy took my teddy bear. Hello? My teddy bear, he's a real fucking bear. Teddy the talking bear? You never heard of him? He's fucking famous. Hello? What's up, buddy? You think we got this? Yeah, all right, good. Yeah, laugh at me when I'm fucking acting. Don't move, thank you. I don't think I've ever seen uh, a set where people are laughing as much as on this movie. There's probably like continents we haven't even discovered yet. <laughs> I'm just saying that we just trust Rand. <laughs> it's great. It's really great, folks. <laughs> it was just very easy going. Everybody was enjoying themselves. <laughs> I mean, I think everyone's having fun. I know I am. Go, 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 step on it! <laughs> what the fuck was that? She's crazy. That was terrifying. <laughs> go. I'm ready. Go. <laughs> what? It's hysterical. I mean, we laugh every day on this movie, and keeping that environment kind of fresh and upbeat. So the primary issue is what's funny, what's fun for the actors, what's fun for Seth. Back off, Chaz Bono! It was an unbelievable achievement, and when I've wound up with a product that is exactly the way I pictured my head right down to the last detail. Seth's always been very specific. He has a, a specific cadence to how he wants things. I do think he very much has his voice. Tammy Lynn's gonna make some IC cola from scratch. It definitely has some trademark Seth MacFarlane humor there. My God, America is imploding. He's just such a nice, warm guy. As funny as any human being I've ever met in my life, but he's just really cool and easy to work with. With this movie, every frame is exactly the way it was supposed to look. You know, and it wasn't hell getting there either. It was a very, it was a fun process. Mm -hmm.